Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe, and you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Photoshop Cafe. Don't forget to connect with us on those social medias because we've got some cool things going on there. Today I've got something super exciting for you. We're going to be talking about the latest update to Lightroom Mobile and the iPad Pro. So hang on a second. I know you've used uh, Lightroom Mobile, maybe you've tinkered around for a little bit in the past, I have too. And to be honest, I wasn't really a huge fan. I mean, I, I thought it was cool, but I'd never really used it a lot. But now that I have an iPad Pro and with the new updates they've done, this has actually become a full featured application, like a real program that you can use on the iPad. Super excited about it. How does it work? Well, you can get your images on here. You can take them on here if you want, or a better way is you choose a computer you want to work with, say a laptop or a desktop computer. And then what you're going to do is you're going to create a collection that you're going to share and then it's going to sync with this. So all the adjustments you make on here are going to go back to there and the ones you make there are going to come back to here. They're going to be in perfect sync. And it's going to be the same adjustments that you would do on the desktop version of Lightroom. So literally, we can do um, localized adjustments, gradients, we can work with the pen, the brush tool, and we can do all those things and do it here, re-edit it later on your laptop, your desktop, and then make adjustments there, and those adjustments will sync on here, so we're going to have the same thing on both. Really exciting stuff. Now, you might have noticed I've got the new 2017 MacBook Pro. Don't worry, I'm going to do a review on that soon because I recently did one on the 2016, why I returned it, and you guys, quarter of a million views on that video so far and counting. So uh, it was obviously a very popular video and you're probably wondering why I'm using this. More to come later. But right now we're going to focus on Lightroom Mobile. So one of the cool things about the new Lightroom Mobile is it takes advantage of the pressure sensitivity of the Apple Pencil. So I can actually use this pencil and I can dodge and burn on my photos pressing harder or lighter to have true pressure sensitivity. So I think you guys are going to like this. So let's jump in right now and start working with some photos inside of the new Lightroom Mobile. So let's go into a photograph that we want to play around with. So I don't know, let's find one here, maybe this one here. And one of the things you'll notice is I can actually hit the keyboard here. This is the Apple keyboard and the keyboard shortcuts work. So you notice I just hit five stars on there. So that's one of the things you might not have realized. Another cool thing is we can tap to go full screen or we can pinch and we can pinch in and out and move around with two fingers and notice it's a great way to get around the images. Super easy. So we just tap once again to bring back the interface on the side. Now here's a cool thing. If we go to the adjustments, these adjustments are very much like the adjustments on the desktop version now. So if we hit here and we choose the light, um, you know, I can do this with my pencil. I can you know, go here, let's do our highlights. Let's bring our highlights all the way back down. Let's recover that in the sky. There we go. Let's open up some shadows a little bit. See that we can play around for our exposure. Set our contrast. Let's give it some whites. Let's put some blacks in there. And you can see that we've got these kind of adjustments. This is great. I really love this. Let's go down a little bit. Maybe we'll go into the color here. Notice we can adjust our color temperature. We can grab our eyedropper tool if we want. We can, let's go over here and we're going to find an area we want to set and then notice how it just updates in real time. We can play around with our tint, you know, our vibrance, all these things that we're used to seeing inside of Lightroom. You know, we've got clarity here, of course. We've got, you know, dehaze. We've got our vignettes. We've got all that kind of stuff. Let's give it a little vignette around the edges there. There we go. That looks nice. And notice, you know, we've got all our detail. All this stuff is here. You know, lens correction, turn that on, and that will automatically make corrections for the lens that we're using. You can see all our cropping tools are right in here. Maybe we want to crop this down a little bit. Let me grab that corner. That looks kind of cool. And we just click done when we've done that. All right, let's have a look at some selective edits. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a gradient. And let's try and add a gradient on there. So we're just going to kind of click and drag it down a little bit. And let's go under that light and we're going to play with it. Let's turn the exposure down a little bit. Let's play around, maybe bring the highlights down. And then if we want to adjust it, we can drag that around, see that? Just like we would with the gradient inside of Lightroom Normal. All right, let's have a look at the brushes though. So we're going to hit the little plus button. This is going to enable us to create another selective edit. This time we're going to grab our brush. 
And the cool thing about this brush is we now have pressure sensitivity with the pen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just very gently kind of painting around here a little bit. All right, and I'm just going to stop there. What we're going to do is we're going to go under here and we're going to lighten up the exposure. So let's just bring it up a little bit. There we go. And now when we start to paint, we can see what we're doing. We can adjust over here, by the way. If we tap on this one and go up or down, we can just adjust the softness or the uh, feathering. And we can adjust the size of the brush there. So let's go for a smaller brush. And I'm just gently painting in down here. Not putting a lot of pressure on there, just a little bit. And if I paint down here and I put more pressure, you'll see what that can do. So let me just undo that though, because we don't want to do that. We're just going to gently build it up. There we go. Creating a nice little bit of information under there. Just kind of painting those boats a little bit. Varying the pressure just to kind of build that up a little bit. There we go. Looking nice. And you can kind of see how those work. And at any time we select those, of course, we can adjust them. See that? So let's bring our highlights down just a little bit. And maybe just give a little pop in the whites. And you can see we could even change the color of those areas if we wanted. If we wanted to kind of put a little color in there. A little yellow in there. See how we can do that? Maybe a little more blue might be a better option. All right, so as you can see, a lot of the different tools work here. You know, we can use our lightness tools or our basic tools here. We've got our color tools. We could play around for our color balance right there if we want to want to make those areas just a little bit cooler to kind of give it a, a glassy kind of crystally look. You could kind of do that. All right, let's have a look at another image. We can just select on it like that. And of course, you know, we've got all our adjustments here. You can see that we want to look at it before and after. I can just kind of tap on it There's before. And there's after. Now everything that's happening here is going to sync to my library on my main computer. So if we go there, all those adjustments are going to be on here. And everything we're used to, you know, our curves are here. We can actually do these curves right on screen. Look at that. So I find this uh, incredibly useful to be able to do this kind of work. And of course, we can go in here. We can take photographs. You know, if you want to go there and shoot a photograph, we could do that. If I click OK, allow the camera. We can do that, and if we click up here, notice the format, where it says DNG, we can go for JPEG or a RAW file. Now, of course, if you're shooting with the um, iPhone or your iPad, you know, you can take a picture like that, and it's just going to pop it right there into your library, and then you can go in and make your adjustments, you know, like you would. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was a little bit enlightening. Um, you know, to me using this, it's definitely a little bit of an eye opener. I find it super cool. It's now going to become part of my regular workflow. So anyway, guys, if you like this video and you want to get more tutorials and reviews and different things like that, hit that subscribe button right now. Become part of the cafe crew. And every week, at least once a week, sometimes two or three times a week, you're going to get a new video. Don't want you to miss it. So you'll be part of our notification squad. And also, if you are a subscriber, see that little bell thing? Click that little bell there on YouTube. So anyway, take that like button, smash it, pound it into dust. Um, let's get a discussion going. Add a comment there. What do you think about this? Is it something that you might want to use? Is it something maybe you are using or maybe you've been using it for a while? Is there anything new in here you learned? Or maybe you've got some suggestions or some cool tips that I didn't mention. Do that. Add a comment. Let us all know. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.